lovely and darling viewers, it's Jen here at Check Her Joy, and this time I'm reviewing No One Can Pronounce My Name by Rakesh Satyel, and I listened to the audiobook for this, which is read by Amel Saihe. Yeah, I can't even pronounce their name, sorry. So this book is an adult contemporary fiction. It focuses on Indian American immigrants, so people from the country of India, and it is mostly about outsiders trying to find their place in America, in their Indian culture, and within their own families. This one spans several generations, and it also has an LGBT, specifically a gay subplot in it, so fair warning on that. So this story is told in third person, but it follows the storylines of three main characters, mostly Harit and Ranjana, and then also Prashant, but sometimes it does follow one of the secondary characters for like a little tiny section or so. So the first character we're introduced to is Harit, and he lives with his mother, who's in really bad health. She has cataracts, she can't see well, she can't take care of herself. So Harit and one of their next door neighbors end up taking care of her, and so Harit doesn't really have a life outside of his house and his work. Harit's home life is doubly complicated because his older sister Swati has died, and Harit and his mother are both completely devastated by this but his mother's memory doesn't seem to be so good. So Harit dresses up in his sister's sari and pretends to be her. And the mom has bad eyesight, so she kind of sees the person sitting in front of her as being Swati. Um, and this is kind of how, I guess, the mother doesn't cope with Swati's death and Harit is trying to cope with their, her death. So the sister dying is this huge part on their relationships and on Harit's life. And then Harit's job is working in this department store in Cleveland, and it's just him and this other guy, Teddy, and they work in accoutrements, so they work in all the male accessories, so ties and cufflinks, um, that kind of stuff. And it's something that Harit didn't know a lot about until he got to the States, and now he's been doing the job for a while. So the, the department store job is important because it's the only time that Harit actually leaves the house, and his only outside interaction is with his coworker, Teddy, and then the other co-workers in the department store, most of whom think he's a bit weird and kind of distance themselves from him because he's Indian and they don't know how to do that and they don't like different. But Teddy just kind of takes him in and like starts talking to him and they, Teddy kind of forces himself into Harit's acquaintanceship and friendship eventually. And then he eventually takes Harit out drinking and spending time outside work together. And so Teddy has his only friend, quasi friend. The closest thing Harit has to a friend. So Harit's pretty isolated, partially because of his mom's being sick, but also partially because of his own personality and his own insecurities. So the second main character we meet is Ranjana, and her only child has just gone off to college, and so she and her husband Mohan are adjusting to having the house to themselves and no longer having to do everything for their child. Like, especially Ranjana was a stay-at-home mom, and everything she did was about taking care of her child and making sure her husband's I'm happy. And now that the child's gone, she's reevaluating her life and thinking about what she wants. And she ends up taking this job in a dentist's office. And the dentist she's working for is Indian and understands like her culture. But then the other, she's like a secretary. And there's another secretary in the dentist's office named Cheryl. And Cheryl is also like a really loud, talkative person and wants to know everything. And so she and Cheryl start this kind of tentative relationship. Which is sweet. Like, I love Cheryl. She is awesome. And she's so welcoming and so well-meaning um, that it's it's great. So Ranjana starts his life outside the house, um, working in the dentist's office. And then she also starts writing paranormal romances and going to this writing group. Although she doesn't really share the paranormal romances with her writing group. She mostly writes other stuff and shares with them. And so Ranjana is slowly starting to get this life outside of her house. Um, her relationship with Mohan is also strained because she, she's going through their browser history and she sees him looking up stuff like how to do sex and she's like, hey, he is not having sex with me. Um, so obviously Mohan must be having sex with someone else. And so their relationship becomes strained and Ranjana doesn't actually talk to him about it and he is also very, um, reserved and doesn't want to talk to her and so they're marriage starts to get strained and stressed out. And so the third main character that we have is Prashant. Although, honestly, it's mostly Ranjana and Harit. 
Um, but Prashant is Ranjana's son. And so he's having his first year away at college. And this is his first time to kind of explore on his own what he wants to be and who he is. So he is balancing this history he has in this strong Indian community and their culture and balancing that with all of a sudden he's in college and he can really partake of mainstream American culture the way that he wants to. And he's kind of struggling with what he wants versus what he's expected to do. I mean, it's not just he's expected to act Indian. Sometimes there are things that he's expected to do because he's in America and he was born in America that he kind of thinks is weird because he grew up as an Indian. Um, so his, 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 he's got like this culture clash thing going on where he's trying to figure out where he fits and everything now. We also see him crushing on this Indian girl who's way out of his league. And he's also not sure about his major anymore. So he went in there fully planning on studying chemistry. And now that he's there, he's like, maybe I want to study English, but that's not a prestigious enough degree for Indians. Like they're supposed to go into math and sciences and things that have high salaries and work hard and English is kind of seen as less than. And so he's struggling with expectations of expectations, not only in how he should act, but also on what he should be doing. All the lives in the story become intertwined as we go further into the book. Eventually, Harit and Ranjana meet, and they slowly become friends, and their meeting pushes and challenges them also. So it challenges Ranjana to look outside her group and look at others, and it challenges Harit to kind of just be outside of himself for a while, like to actually try to become part of this Indian culture that he was born into but hasn't been really active in. Throughout this book, these characters have plenty of insecurities and they are keeping secrets from each other and they also have a lot of passions that they aren't sharing with others. And as the book progresses, then they become more secure in who they are and more vocal and willing to experiment and try out these new things, which I loved about the story. So the characters are really entertaining and they're fully developed and they're interesting. And they're really, which is good because this is mostly a character driven book, I would say. The actual writing style is really funny. It's kind of light. It does have its dark, deep moments. I mean, we're talking about one of the characters' sister having died and a marriage is falling apart. Like there's deep stuff happening in here, but also some of it's just kind of humorous. So on the whole, I found this book pretty satisfying. I enjoyed it. However, it's not really my kind of read. Like I don't really like adult contemporary fiction that is mostly relationship drama and stuff. Um, I mean, this wasn't so much relationship drama as like internal drama, um, which is not like my main, my main jam. So on the whole, I gave this book three stars, which is pretty decent. I mean, I think that's pretty standard. It was a good book, but I'm not majorly in love with the book. So the one gripe I had about this book is that it supposedly takes place in Cleveland, which is where I am from. And I didn't, I like, it felt weird to me because like they're, um, not the Indian culture itself, but like the outside culture, especially Harit's department store, um, where all these white people work there and they are also self-absorbed. And like, I'm like, where is he? This is not downtown Cleveland. Like maybe he's out in some really far Eastern Western suburb or something. But Cleveland itself is pretty black. So like he talks about how there's only one black person working in their store. And I'm like, how is that possible? What? That seems really weird and strange to me. So it kind of kicked me out of the book every time he's like, it's Cleveland. And I'm like, no, that's not. That's not Cleveland. That's really not. No, that's not my city. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, but that's not where I'm from. Um. Then again, not coming from an Indian American family, maybe that is what it's like. And I'm just completely missing it because I'm white and privileged. Who knows? So like I said, I gave this three stars. It's pretty entertaining and interesting. I mostly read it because it was about Indian American families, which is a not a group that I have read much about. So pushing myself to read books that are outside my comfort zone. So I really did enjoy this book. There isn't anything about it other than the Cleveland thing that I kind of hated, but there's nothing in it that I really loved either. So middling three stars. So let me know in the comments below if you have read this book or you're thinking about reading it. Or do you have recommendations for other books following Indian American or just Indians in general? We can talk about Asia. That's cool. So feel free to like, share, subscribe, and peace out. I love you guys and keep reading. Bye.